Last year, around this time, I started preparing my TEDx speech. In June this year, I have finished the first draft of my TEDx speech. Impressed by my good effort and nice topic, I had given myself a nice short break. Not that long, only about two months. As the day we had to present inch closer and closer, I got the sign that we couldn't keep procrastinating anymore. As an experienced team with less than a month to prepare, I realized I needed help. I reached for help. Who did I ask? A fantastic presenter, a professor at my school, someone I knew was well versed in the art of speech writing. What I clever did was act social media, which consisted of random advice given by someone who probably haven't made a proper public speech before. All presented with pretty posters and random dudes faces. $7.99 per the whole notes, $99.99 per class, $399.99 per the whole speech, for, for the whole speech um, season classes. A day afterwards, when I went on social media, I will be recommended things related to speeches. This is no coincidence, and is in fact due to something called algorithms. So what are algorithms? Simply put, algorithm is a systematic procedure that consisted of um, a sequence of, infin of finite numbers that will help us answer a question or find a solution to a problem. It still sounds a bit complicated, right? So for us to break things down, I would like to think about your age right now. So my current age is 16 years old. And feel free to think about your age 10 years ago. I believe that's your actual age. And then try to substitute your age with the letter B here. And my age will be represented with letter A. So here we are. We're going to imitate a process that algorithm is going to use to think. First, you're going to read what A and B is. And then we're going to compare A with B to see if A is greater than B, equivalent with B, or B is greater than A. Then we have two options here. So first would be A is greater or equivalent with B. The so second is B is greater than A. And that um, represents our options yes and no. Then we stop. So this is how algorithm would come up with a result for us. And it's actually be using every day by algorithm that is using this type of method to calculate our interests, habits on social media. This mathematical procedure is now being widely used in the field of computer science. Since the 2000s, algorithms have been used in a wide range of purposes, like providing relevant content for social media users, analyzing and predicting criminal activity. Um, in terms of social media platforms, the common apps that we're using every day, we call them social media service providers, like TikTok, Douyin, YouTube, Instagram. They all have their own ranking signals. Every like, comment, read, shared, will be recorded and stored, using to create our personalized data. So that's why if you search for cute cats videos on TikTok, it will be more likely for you to get more cute cat clips than cute dogs or ducks. Sounds interesting, right? But have you ever wondered why are they being so nice and want us to be so happy during the time we spend on social media? Well, they have been designed deliberately to keep us stay longer on the social media apps. It will be hard for us to stop watching videos if, if we start. We'll keep scroll down, scroll down, and scroll down. When we realize we're entering this world with endless funny videos and images, we have been trapped. We have been kidnapped by social media algorithms, by yes and no decisions. Wait, but hold on a second. Don't panic. We all know this is not true because social media doesn't have hands. And you might think it's OK to be trapped. But the thing is, being in this trap does have a negative impact. According to a survey done by Peer Research in the US, Walk It Is Out Law 2022, found that YouTube dominated teens' online landscape with 95% of teens using it. This is followed by TikTok, 
with 67%. What was disturbing from the study is that up to 19% of teens reported constantly visit or use these social media apps. Meanwhile, social media can cause anxiety among young people. Living here, social network empowerment research report that in China, up to 73% of young people checking social software at least once every 15 minutes. And for 71.3% of teens often open social software even for work or meetings. And then 84.4% of teens are feeling anxious because their mobile phones cannot access the internet. A growing body of research in the US has shown an association between screen time and adverse mood. Negative behavior norms such as depression, anxiety, low self-esteem, parental, and self-reported lower overall well-being, with time spent on social media likely to have the biggest impact. So social media use has been established to have an impact on adolescent life. And more and more people are being kidnapped by social media. Is this conclusion true? As I mentioned before, social media doesn't have hands, so it is unlikely for us to be tracked by them. There must be a mysterious person behind the stage using social media to control us. Who is that person? Well, the answer is actually simple and unsurprising. People. Yes, people. They are not kidnappers who want our lives, but want to take the whole benefits of us using our time spent on social media. Like the advertisement I, can ma I have mentioned before when I was searching for how to deliver a speech. Their intentions were to sell courses and make money. The problem is we can't do anything about these kidnappers. We can't reach out to them and ask for a battle assignment. But there is a tool that they are using may benefit us as well. It is social media. We can make use of social media and use it for our own sake, for us to become better users and, be, and avoid being kidnapped. So for us to become the better user of social media, here are several suggestions. First, for educators. Try to combine student psychological education with practical courses like how algorithms work and learning how to time manage the use of social media. It is undeniable that media is an inevitable tool used by contemporary young people. So it is extremely important for us to teach young people how to use social media responsibly and understand its double edge nature and the computational principles behind it. Second, at present, big data is not transparent. Only a few people who work in specific personal information departments have learned related information and knowledge about how social media serves. Policy regulation should be coming up aimed to prevent tech companies and programmers behind the algorithms controlling online information services, targeting young people with unhealthy information. Lastly, it is important for us to develop a balance between life, life online and real life life. We need time to grow, to improve, we can become influencers sharing our new findings of life online. At the same time, having a cheerful life in the physical world while we are using it. Think about who we are delivering this message to and therefore, how should we draft the content? Rescue Teenager is a task that requires concerted efforts from educators, governors, regulators, and tech industry, and certainly young people. I have one last piece of advice shared to you um, by ending my speech. If you're preparing a speech right now and you're at the stage that you think you might need a little bit of help, it will be more beneficial if you can find a professor who is a fantastic presenter and is well versed in the art of speech writing. Then ask help from social media. Thank you.